Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are doing a blind reaction to Talk To Me. This is a donation work for Sweet Venom, and it's an A24 film. That's pretty much what I know about it. It's an A24 film that came out in July. It is now on streaming and shit. What am I supposed to say? I, I don't know anything about the plot. I don't know who's in it. I am blind on this. Um, talk to me. The only thing in terms of horror that that makes me think of is, uh, like, I don't know, like a Ouija board or some shit like that. Um, like communicating with spirits, the dead. Otherwise, talk to me doesn't really sound like a horror thing. Um, it, it doesn't really sound like it'd be, it, it'd work for a slasher kind of situation. Doesn't sound like it would work for, I mean, like, zombies or other kind of paranormal entities outside of, like, spirits. Doesn't really sound like it would be a big gory thing. So, yeah, I, I, I guess we'll just have to end up seeing. Um, I've heard some good things about this, I guess you could say. I've heard, like, some murmuring around <laughs> that people like this, um, but nothing, like, major. It seems like maybe a lot of people don't know about this film, which, it's an A24 film, so that's not entirely surprising. Um, but there are some A24 films that get a lot of attention, like Us, for example, I believe is A24. Um... Is Get Out A24 as well? Are both of those A24? I don't know. Offhand. But there are, there are some. <laughs> um, but then other ones just kind of like become very niche. And are, are only really known by like people who like really focus in and pay attention a lot of the times. Um, but I'm willing to see what this is about. I was kind of interested in checking it out back in back when it came out because i was thinking of like when it was in theaters at that point i was thinking of me and my sister going to see something uh it was in theaters at the same point as uh last uh voyage of the demeter and those were two movies that we were thinking of because they were horror movies and i know me and my sister like horror movies but we didn't end up going at all <laughs> so i never really looked into it any further um but yeah so going into this pretty completely blind it's about an hour and a half long so pretty average length um definitely interested to see what we got here let's get this going and hope for the best so when the screen fades to black pause this redirect and go to the description below follow the link to the reaction and after you watch it come back here to the redirect and resume play because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything without point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the movie. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, how would I describe this? Spirit? Spiritual horror? <laughs> um... It's not like, it, it's not exorcism horror. Um, supernatural horror is more broad. Um, possession horror, maybe? Um, the, the, the thing is, movies like this tend to be on the lower end of horror for me. Um, because a lot of them end up being very samey. You know, it's like you've seen a movie where the main focus is spirits and possession and whatnot. You've seen them all. Um, they're, they're always kind of the same thing. Characters have to deal with possession, have to deal with the possibility of, you know, the spirits tricking you. You have to deal with, um, whether or not you're going to be possessed or someone you know and care about is possessed, yada, yada, yada. Lots of things uh, that you see in all of them. 
supernatural shit like this, um, just without the exorcism aspect kind of thrown in. Um, basically, a similar to that kind of vibe, just, again, without the exorcism aspect. Um, and this was definitely one of those kind of spirit-based horror films uh, within that realm. To where it, it, it feels like this is the kind of movie that you've seen. Like, replace the embalmed hand with a Ouija board. Or an old book or something. Some kind of, like, cursed object. You know? And, and you, you see this and you go into this and it's like, okay, we've seen this before. And then you actually get through the movie and say, we have not seen this before. This is fucking amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> this movie wowed me. Um, right from, from the point with the first uh, seance. That, that might be a good way to put it. Seance horror. Um, from the first seance uh, they did where along with the sound effects, doors opening, closing and everything, uh, like the camera will tilt um just from that stuff alone it's like oh that's cool i like that and it didn't feel unnatural <laughs> um weirdly enough it felt like it, it it just was supposed to happen in that moment the the specific way the camera moved was right as well it didn't feel like it moved too much or too uh little it didn't move too fast or slow it felt just right um, the Goldilocks of horror camera movement. <laughs> um, but then the movie continues and you start to see where it's going. You start to see the spirits and start to understand, okay, this is going to go too far. And it's very clear that shit's going to get really bad really quick. These malevolent spirits are going to probably possess someone semi-permanently. Um, you're probably going to have people die because of it. Um, and, and while there wasn't much death in this, there, there were a couple people who died and everything. It, it's like there wasn't a lot. Um, but at the same time, uh, the focus wasn't really on that. The focus was more on the horror surrounding the possession itself and the unreliability of our main character's uh, perspective. I think that's the best part about this. Trying to figure out if what Mia is seeing and being told is real. And we find out by the end, it is fucking not <laughs> at all. The, 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 the spirit pretending to be her mother, oh my God, that is like terrifyingly uh, manipulative and fake. Um, and in the end is like yeah it, it was kind of proven with what uh they said at the end like he'll be with us forever or whatever it was um and, and that's clearly what caused mia to commit suicide instead of killing riley which is not what i would say a better option <laughs> it's not good but at least she didn't kill anyone and it's clear that she, re when she realized that she was the one being possessed, that it was never Riley, everything kind of comes to light. Riley hurting himself like that, the first time at the party was probably actually happening, but every time after and whatnot, it was Mia. It was absolutely Mia doing it. And this was foreshadowed by the fact that uh, when, when Mia thought she saw this spirit sucking on Daniel's foot, it was really her. She's been manipulated into believing these spirits are doing things that in reality they're possessing her to do. So it's very clear that like when, um, when uh, for example, um, you see Riley smashing his head into the 
tiles of the uh, of the shower and everything when they when they're supposed to be cleaning him and all that that was Mia doing that that she was attacking him and was being led to believe that it was a spirit possessing him that we were seeing it from her perspective just like the spirit uh, the the the, the evil spirit version of her father that attacked her was never really there and in reality her father came in to find out what was going on to her and she killed him and by the end we see that someone else somehow got a hold of the hand and the cycle continues with her being summoned her being let in And it's a tragic closure to this. Because Mia, who is basically our main point of view character, dies. She dies and she kills herself to get rid of the spirits possessing her and to protect others. Because again, she realized what had been happening and that's why she jumped in the way. She didn't just only not push Riley in the traffic. She jumped into the traffic. Because she knew it was the way to keep them safe. She knew it would protect them. And, again, it's... it's I would not call it a better decision. I would not call it a good decision. But at least she didn't kill anyone else besides her father. Um, at least she was able to stop the cycle from continuing at that point. Even though someone else somehow got a hold of the hand. Um, yeah. The entire situation, everything that occurred, like, it, 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 for, it, it was... It basically came down to it did become her fault. The spirit had tricked her into thinking it was her mother to force her to to keep the seance going on Riley for too long. This caused Riley to get horrifically, brutally injured by the spirit and for um, Mia herself to get possessed through the grip of the hand. Um, or rather through the connection, uh, I guess, to, uh, I guess it was locational, maybe? Maybe this, because the thing, uh, was in the world of living for too long, it was able to manifest itself and connect to her because she was, like, right by Riley trying to stop this or whatever? I, I, I don't know exactly the details aren't always a hundred percent clear and it's it definitely sometimes takes multiple watches to get everything down um so yeah it's it's a really tragic story but it is genuinely scary in a more like tense emotional way it doesn't quite get to the point where it's like the same kind of scary as say a, a, a slasher film or a an exorcist film uh, exorcism film I should say or stuff like that it's not quite the same it's it's it's, its own kind of fear that's built on Again, the tension and uncertainty. Um, all the actors did a great job at seeming like, uh, at times, dumb teenagers. Um, at other times, you know, coming across as really scared or really intense. Uh, the mother, the actress who played the mother was great when she got, like, angry at Mia and everything. Like, it was a great scene. Um... Everyone just really did well. 
it was intense it was shocking it was wild the the music was good the cinematography the directing everything really just worked um it, it again genuinely super hard impressed me um i i would not have expected it because like i said with these kind of movies you've seen one you've seen them all usually but apparently that's not always the case apparently you can have an outlier that just stands out in the best way and i hope we get more movies like this and, and i looked it up apparently there is going to be a sequel and they've also thought about maybe doing a prequel showing uh duckett i think his name was showing everything that happened with him and all um prior to the events of the film so the 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 sequel is confirmed the prequel has just been thought of and talked about and whatnot uh the sequel is apparently confirmed in august and there's apparently even be, been a, a logo reveal and everything and it's just talk number two or i'm doing it backwards for you number two and then me it's like oh my god that is so fucking cheesy like <laughs> Are we still doing that shit? Um, I mean, I guess it's A24, and they did Happy Death Day to you. So it's like, I guess it's kind of like in their wheelhouse. Um, or was Happy Death Day Blumhouse? Maybe it was both. Um, now I'm curious. Um, but yeah. I, I, I looked up the actors and all. I don't really know any of them. Um, but I think they all did a great job. It, it seems like they were, it was mostly Australian actors, if not all Australian actors, because it was an Australian production. Um, but yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, this is the same Blumhouse and Universal Pictures. Okay, so I was wrong. This is Blumhouse, not, uh, A24. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Is it Everything Everywhere All at Once? Hereditary, which I saw with my sister this past weekend. Uh, The Witch, I've seen that. The Lighthouse... Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I've seen some of these. Looks like there's been 134 A24 movies in total. Midsommar. Um, what was the one I was trying to think of? Trying to find it here. Um, us, us, and uh, everything is uh, the Jordan Peele movies are, aren't they? I'm trying to find those here. Um, I've heard of some of these, but never seen them. Like uh, uh, Moonlight, for example. Yeah, there are a lot of these. I didn't. I sometimes didn't don't realize that A24 has this many movies. The Disaster Artist is one I've seen. Yeah, there's Hereditary. Not all of them are uh, horror either. A24 does do other stuff. It seems like they're most known for their horror movies, though. Like, when you think of A24, that's the kind of stuff you think of. Like, Midsommar and Hereditary as examples. Um, the Lighthouse isn't really horror, but it kind of goes into that same general idea. Um, apparently Uncut Gems was, uh, A24. Never saw that one either. Uh, The Green Knight, uh, that one looked kind of interesting, but I haven't seen it. I have seen Lamb. Lamb was kind of a big one for a bit. Uh, there's Everything Everywhere All at Once. I've heard of Marcel the Shell with shoes on, but I've never seen it. Uh, I've heard of Pearl as well, but I don't really know what it is. 
I've just heard people like praise it. Oh, okay. There's a movie that says white noise on here. I'm like, wait, no, that's the wrong air date. There's the old, there's some old horror movies called White Noise. I think there were two of them. Uh, the Whale is A24. Can't forget that. Pie, apparently, by Darren Aronofsky. Bo is Afraid was a big one. Even though I don't think a lot of people liked it that much. There's Talk to Me. Huh, maybe, maybe Us and Everything wasn't. Huh, maybe I was wrong. Hold on. Us. 2019. Us and Get Out were what I was thinking of. Let me see. Us is by Monkey Paw Productions, Perfect World Pictures, and Universal Pictures. Is the distrib the last one's the distributor, but still. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. and get out is the same, but also Blumhouse. I must have been thinking of Blumhouse when I was th when I was like talking like a twenty four with those. I think I was thinking of Blumhouse. Oh well, but either way. Yeah, this movie was honestly just really fantastic. Um, a big surprise for me because I, I went into this not knowing what it was going to be about at all. And once I realized it was like a seance horror, I, I kind of like, I, I wouldn't say tuned out, but I, I kind of like was becoming skeptical of it. But it, it did impress me. It did genuinely impress me. Um... But yeah, so tell me in the comments below, what did you think of Talk To Me? Uh, let me know, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.